Okay, so we just set up a non-destructive overlay layer, and it's just filled with middle gray. Before we start putting shadows and highlights onto the setting, we need to know exactly where we're putting our creature. So now that I kind of know the placement and the size of my creature, now I can take that layer and I can just do fine adjustments, and this becomes a design issue, right? So I had him, I think, right here. I, have him right, I had him right here, and there's a slight design issue I have because the, the tip of the nostril and the tip of the wings are touching this mountain. And that's called a tangency in design. The mountain is quite a bit behind, so it, it kind of brings too much attention to that edge. So it'd be better if I have that overlap a little bit. That's called relative perspective. And then the other thing that's helpful is in that these mountains kind of show behind my creature a little bit. So trying to kind of overlap aspects. If I want to rotate, I can just use Command T. And I can use warp and I can use uh, distort, you know, all to kind of mess with it a little bit. And I have enough space that I could even shrink him down. And it should still be fine. Right. Just as long as I'm paying attention to those tangencies. So I kind of like the wing being here across the Milky Way. So it kind of shows that cosmic light showing through the wing. And all of that is before adding the texture overlays, which should only help, right? So now I haven't changed really anything about my background. And I've put this flat gray layer on top of it. And I did that again by making a new layer and then saying edit fill with middle gray, 50% gray at 100% normal mode. And then I changed that mode from normal to what's called overlay. So that gives me what's called a non-destructive overlay layer. And what happens is when I turn off the background, then even though it's on overlay, it will show me the middle gray again because there's nothing underneath it. And I'm going to use dodge and burn. So the first one I'm going to use is burn because shadows are the easiest to understand. And I'm going to burn this layer. And I'm going to use my burn tool like I have been on the midtones at an exposure of less than 20 because it builds up quick with a brush that's at least 300 pixels, pretty big, and 0% hardness. And when I burn, it's going to darken that middle gray. The more I press, the more it will darken it to create shadows. This is just doing an arbitrary shadow in the middle. You'll see how it affects the landscape. It's burning what's underneath without destroying the pixels that are already there. So let's reset. Edit, fill, 50% gray. Now it's clean again, right? Where do I want those shadows? I probably want them underneath where the creature is. So there's a slight cast shadow of this creature, even though it's right at the edge, onto this landscape. So what does that look like? Looks like that. Right. This is how shadow logic works. This is what you take drawing for, painting for. But basically, I'll do a really quick little drawing here. So you have a sphere. The light source is coming from this direction. You're going to have shadows here. This is what's called the core shadow. And then it's going to cast a shadow underneath it where it's touching the ground. And where it touches to the ground, the closest to the object, that's where the edge of the shadow will be the most crisp and clean and dark. And as the shadow goes out from there, make my brush a little bit bigger, it starts to soften at its edges and it starts to lighten. Right. And then 
The reason the core shadow is only on the core is because light hits from here and also bounces off the ground and then reflects back onto this edge. So this is called reflected light. So it's not quite as bright as the highlight, but it's not as dark as the core shadow either. So we have two types of, of shadows to deal with. We have what are called the form shadows that are on the object itself and kind of show its three-dimensionality. And we have the cast shadows that are blocking the light and being cast onto the environment. So for this non-destructive overlay layer, this is just for the cast shadows on the environment. Next, we're going to do a non-destructive overlay layer for our creature, and that's going to be for the form shadows on our creature to match the angle of the lighting. All right, I'm just going to duplicate that and fill it, edit, fill, middle gray to wipe that out. And now let me paint that shadow, right? You can actually paint it with different grays or you can just use dodge and burn. Because those grays are just going to affect the layer on top. So there's my shadow. And that, little as that is, simple as that gesture is, that is going to help make it feel like this guy is hopping up in the air. Even though he's not touching any ground. If he was touching the ground, that shadow would be a lot crisper. Like that. Okay, next. What about the environment? This lighting is kind of annoying, right? Because I want all the highlights to kind of come from this moon and be hitting like it is across this rock. So this really strong warm lighting doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So on this same layer, I can burn this down a little bit. But as I burn it, you'll see that it gets more and more saturated. So when you dodge and burn on an overlay layer, you can't control the saturation with the sponge tool because it's already gray. But what I can do is I can then burn the highlights and take it down. And so in these, that kind of instance, I might take a big chunk of the setting like this, and then I might duplicate it. This is another way of being non-destructive is just to make a duplicate. I have to unlock the layer first, duplicate it, lock it, and then I can burn that duplicate. And when I do that, I won't have those same saturation issues. And if I do, I can always use the sponge tool. Why do I say still use the burn tool instead of using levels, a direct adjustment? Well, because if I use levels, just because I cut it out with the lasso, that's going to give me a really sharp edge. And I want it all to be blended beautifully, right? So I'm just hitting the highlights, burning them down, and that's helping take down the saturation. And then I can always softly erase away from it. If I need to, I can also go the opposite way. I can dodge it in the midtones softly. And then most importantly, when I am on a duplicate, not a, not a non-destructive overlay layer, I can desaturate it. I can also just take down the color directly, step by step. And so this is a chance for you to kind of even just improve your landscape, because this has nothing to do with my creature. This is just interfering with the read of it.
So I might decide to burn the highlights in a lot of these areas. So there's stuff you can do to the, to the setting directly. There's stuff you can do on your overlay layers, right? Actually, I think this is better if I just, whoops, what am I doing? Nope, I want middle gray. There we go. You can kind of adjust it as you need. Yep, that works. Okay, now I want to do the same thing to my creature. So I'm going to use a non-destructive overlay layer. Again, normal mode. A new layer, fill with middle gray, saying edit, fill, middle gray. And then I set it to overlay. But this time, I want to cut out the edges of my creature. Because otherwise, if I just start burning on top of my creature, not only is it going to burn my creature, it's going to burn the background behind my creature, right? which might not even be a bad thing in the case of these mountains. <laughs> you know, I can burn those a little bit. But you'll see they affect the background as well as my creature. So how can I avoid that? Well, let me reset this to just be filled with middle gray. This is how you erase your overlay layer. You just fill it again with middle gray. And now I'm going to go to my creature layer, and I'm going to use my magic wand, and I'm going to select the empty space around him, this is with contiguous turned on, but I can actually turn off contiguous in case there's any undercuts, like little spaces you want to show through. And then I'm going to say select the inverse. So it's just going to select my creature. Then I'm going to go to my gray layer. I'll make it normal so you can see it. And then I'm going to duplicate, Command J, make a cookie cutter of it. And then I set that to overlay mode. And it's like nothing happened, right? But then I'm going to dodge and burn on this layer. And if the lighting's coming from here, right, and spilling across these rocks, then it's not going to be as strong on the underside of this creature. So I need to burn it down, not just, well, maybe starting in the highlights, but then also in the midtones. So what am I doing if I show you on normal mode? That's what I'm doing. It's kind of slow, but you can always just turn it on and off to see the effect it's having. Okay, now I'm going to go to the midtones, darken those. And remember, it's non-destructive, but you're not going to be able to get rid of pure white, you know, on the overlay layer. Because all the overlay layer can do is go from middle gray to, to black, right? And layer that on. But I sometimes find it helpful just to look at it this way and you think, okay, well, where would shadows be? on this creature in this lighting condition. Well, they're going to be all on this underside. I don't need to worry about staying in the lines because it will only affect where those gray pixels are that I've already cut out. So now that those are my shadows. What about my highlights? Well, now I'm going to switch to dodge. And I'm going to do the same thing. Where would those shadows be? Or where would those highlights be? They'd be on the